Hello everyone, this is CZTL and welcome to another Tarkov Beginner Series video. Today, we're going to be going over the Character Inventory menu. This video is targeted at beginners, but I will include chapters for those in case more experienced players find any sections interesting. A lot of the pre-raid tips and tricks that we're going to discuss today will also be applicable in raid as well. When you load up Tarkov for the first time, your inventory will look something like this. On the left side is your PMC character. Everything on that side will be brought into raid when you deploy. The right side is your stash. You can move anything off your character that you don't want to bring into raid, and vice versa. But there are some restrictions to what you can bring into raid. For example, you can't bring more than 280,000 rubles. Now we will focus on your stash. Depending on the faction you choose for your PMC, you will have different items in your stash. Depending on the version of the game that you have, you may have more inventory spaces to start with. If you don't have the Edge of Darkness edition, you can upgrade the size of your stash in your hideout. For a bear, your stash should look almost exactly like this. Notice these buttons. We will go over the actions that you can take for each of these categories. Let's start by filtering by armor. If you right click on a piece of armor, you can see the actions that you can perform. The first one is inspect. This might be the most important button when starting out. Here you can see what the item looks like and various attributes about the item. Armor points is how much damage the armor can take. When there are zero armor points left, bullets will pass through as if it doesn't exist. Armor class is the armor level, ranging from 1 to 6. Different types of bullets are better at penetrating armor than others. 2 isn't a very good armor class, but you'll unlock better ones later. The material plays into how well it repairs. There are performance modifiers also when wearing armor. Here there are 3 negative ones. Finally, the armor areas is where the armor protects. Armor has two values in the bottom right. The numerator is the current hit points and the denominator is the maximum hit points. The next action repair will decrease the maximum armor points but bring up the current hit points to match that number. For example, an armor that was 0 out of 50 would turn into something like 45 over 45 after repairing. The amount of hit points remaining on the armor after repairing depends on the material that the armor is made out of, as some material repairs better than others. Also, different traders are better at repairing armor than others. Be sure to pay attention to the cost that each trader charges when repairing armor. The next item is ensuring, which I recommend waiting until the pre-raid screen to do. Filter by item is the next action that you can perform. This allows you to search for an item, to check its price, and also buy more. Link search finds the items that can interact with the item that you're searching for. It is more applicable for guns and ammo than armor. As you can see, there's no items that get listed here. Required search finds barters where the item that you clicked is required. And finally, discard just deletes the item from your inventory. You almost never want to use this as you want to sell all the items that you can to the traders. The next type of item we will talk about are containers. This encompasses rigs and backpacks, so we'll skip the rig filter later. When we inspect the container, you can see the number of slots it has. The slots within a container are in a specific orientation that you can view by double clicking on it or by right clicking the item and selecting open. Only items with dimensions that fit into the available slots can be put into the container. While we are on containers, I want to cover an important topic, weight, which is displayed in the top right. The items inside the container count towards the weight that you see in the top right. How much your player is carrying has an effect on PMC movements, which we'll cover in a different video. But overweight characters in summary aren't as quick and nimble as underweight characters. I'm going to skip the next two tabs as they don't have any new actions. Barter items are items that you can use to trade for other items. A lot of quest items are also barter items. Grenades, when you inspect them, it tells you the attributes about how they work. The Mods tab includes Magazines, which we will cover later, as well as Weapon Attachments. The only new action you can take 
with mods is to install them. This will install them onto a gun or part that has an open slot for them. There are however a couple of interesting things to look at when you inspect them. First, they show the guns that they are compatible with. Second, they show any associated slots for items. Things that can go into these slots will come up when you do a link search. Notice the items that can be attached to this item show up in addition to the items that can attach the item that you're searching for. In this example, you can see that handguards show up in addition to weapons. Next is the rations tab. Drinks and food are required to keep your hydration and energy above zero. You can take damage and die if they're not above zero. When you inspect the food and drink items, you can see how much energy and hydration they give you. There are two new options available when you right click on the items. Use and use all. I wouldn't do this when you aren't in raid. These are already increasing when you're not in raid as you can see by the up arrows next to my character's current values. You also don't get skill points toward your character's metabolism skill if you aren't in raid. The final thing I want to show you while we're here is required search and action. Here, vodka and two herring are required to barter for this unknown helmet. Next is the meds tab. There are no new actions that we haven't covered here, but I'll briefly summarize how health works in Tarkov. You can see that you have a total health pool of 440. Each limb has its own health. When you add that all together, you get 440. If you take damage that brings your thorax or head below zero, you die. If the health of one of your legs is zero or it's broken, you can't walk fast or run. Using painkillers will allow you to walk fast again and run if you want to take damage. You can also bleed, which reduces the health of each of your body parts equally over time. You can inspect all the health items to see how they affect what I described to you about health. The ammo tab is next. The only new action that we have is to top up a stack of ammo. This is helpful when trying to bring spare ammunition into a raid. One other helpful thing when you're dealing with ammo is if you drag it over a magazine, it will highlight itself green if it fits into that mag. Next, we'll move on to magazines. There are two new menu items here. The first is to unload ammo. This will dump it into the same container that the magazine is in, or randomly into your stash if it's in your stash. The second is to load ammo. This will give you the ability to select what ammo type that you want to put in the magazine. These are two very helpful tools. One final thing to note, when you link search on a magazine, it shows you the ammo types that will fit into the magazine. There's also one final menu item called tag, which allows you to label your magazines, although it currently doesn't work, which is why I didn't mention it. The final tab that we'll dive into is the weapons tab. It's very important that you always inspect your gun. Durability is extremely important for accuracy, although there's no indication of that on this screen. Try to maintain a durability over 80. I cover the other attributes in the middle in more advanced videos. Right below that middle section, you'll notice the caliber and rate of fire. Those are two very important things to know about your gun. I wanted to cover everything caliber all in one place, so I didn't mention it during the magazine and ammo sections. But inspecting those will also show the caliber and ammo types. There are instances where guns magazines fit into a gun that can hold a caliber that the weapon doesn't fire. When that happens, you cannot fire your gun, so make sure to check your mags. Finally, notice the different slots that you can add attachments to. Link searching the gun will help you find parts to put there. It will also help you find magazines and ammo that fits the gun. Right clicking on the guns, you have the ability to select reload, unload, and also load the guns. The next two options when you right click a gun aren't available yet edit preset and modding, but they are a huge help when building guns. You can unlock them when you upgrade your workbench in your hideout. You can repair guns the same way that you can repair armor. You can use this to help increase the durability translating into a more reliable and accurate gun. You also have the ability to fold guns. I wouldn't do this to guns that you're carrying in your weapon slots, but it really helps for storage. And finally, you have the ability to disassemble weapons so that you can build them up from scratch or sell the component pieces. Now I want to give you some helpful tips so that your inventory doesn't wind up like this. Control plus left click will move an item in and out of your containers. Alt plus left click will equip or unequip an item. 
These also work in raid and are extremely helpful. Holding control while dragging an item that's in a stack will allow you to split the stack. You can gain more stash space by putting things inside containers in your stash. And you can put backpacks inside of other backpacks. There's a tool called the sorting table. Click the icon in the bottom to bring it up. This is temporary extra space when your inventory gets crazy. Add items to the sorting table by holding shift and pressing left click. Closing the sorting table will try to put everything back in your stash. And finally, if things get too out of control, there's always the sort button. Let me know if you found this video helpful. If you did, smash the like out of that ship button and consider subscribing for more helpful Tarkov videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the battlefield.